The purpose of this video is to show you how to produce a piece of acrylic with a double bend, um, for example in this iPad stand here. Uh, I'm just going to hide the iPad by selecting it and choosing the hide component so that we can see the acrylic a bit more clearly and I'm also going to take off the integrated preview because it's a little bit slow to see. You can see here it's a piece of acrylic that's been bent with a double bend, equal angles, with an angled slot cut through the side of it. So just press Control 7 and then if I just do integrated preview um, it's been rendered in a clear acrylic. And it's quite a quick exercise so it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. So I'll minimise that down and I'll take you through step by step on how to do that. So I'm going to start with a new document, a new part, click on OK. I won't be putting any sizes on the drawing so um, I haven't got an iPad that I'm going to drop into this particular drawing I'm just going to take you through the stages of drawing the shape. So I'm going to start on the top plane and I'm going to do a new sketch on the top plane and I'm going to do a centre rectangle and I'm going to select a shape round about there and I might just put the fillets on the corners now just radius the corners going to click click OK. I'm going to press Control 7. I'm happy with that shape and I'm going to do an extruded boss base to make it three millimeters thick for my acrylic. So I'm going to change the 10 to 3 and accept that. And I've got the shape that I want to produce a bend on. Now to be able to bend this I need to turn it into sheet metal and on my menu I've got the sheet metal tab showing. If you haven't got it showing, you'll need to right click on the menu bar, on the grey tabs, and click sheet metal. Okay, if I just turn mine back off, you can see there now it's gone. If I right click on the menu bar and sheet metal, it reappears. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to sheet metal and choose convert to sheet metal to, turn, to actually convert this drawing to sheet metal. Um, it wants to know, okay, the object that I'm going to convert, so I'm going to select the top face there. You can see that. It wants to know a thickness and it's defaulting to 3mm because I recently drew a piece of 3mm sheet metal. So I'm going to click on OK. And that now shows the sheet metal features. They've all come alive. They're all ungrayed now. So all of them are accessible to me. And I want to put a sketched bend across here and across here. And I want them to be uh, equal distance from the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sketch bend. It will ask me to select a face. So I'll select the top face and it's created a sketch called Sketch 6. I'm going to select Sketch 6 and go Normal 2 so it turns the drawing to face me. I'm going to draw a line where I want my bend. Put it there. And I need another line on the other side at equal distance. Now there's two ways of doing this accurately. I could take a smart dimension between there and there and then do the same on the other end. I'm actually going to do that slightly differently. I'm going to go for a centre line. I'm going to snap it to the middle of there and the middle of there. You'll notice it's a broken line, which means it's not part of the drawing. It's there as a construction line. And then I'm going to choose a uh, mirror entities. I'm going to say the entities I want to mirror are this line here. So not line four. Line four I can get rid of. I just press delete on the keyboard. And I want to mirror it about the line there, which is line four. And you'll notice it's done a, a mirror line there. I'm going to click OK. Now if I smart dimension this line from the end, any changes I make to this, let's change that to 48, the other one moves with it. So it's quite good if you're modelling and you want to try things out and experiment. It's a quick way of moving both lines. So I'm going to accept that. And I'll press Control 7 again. And you'll notice that I've got my two lines in position. I'm going to exit the sketch. And it goes back to the sketch bend that I started with when I put, put the lines on at the beginning. Now it wants to know a fixed face. So I need to select in this box here the fixed face. And the fixed face is going to be here. And you'll notice it's defaulted to a 90 degree angle and it's instantly recognised that I might want to bend up on both of those lines. Well actually I want to bend downwards so I'm going to change that arrow there, reverse direction. And I don't want 90 degrees, I actually want 60 degrees and 
you can see there I've got my bent acrylic shape. Now I'm just going to go back into my sketch bend and edit the feature because you'll notice there were four options for where the bend actually happens and that is all in relation to where you've drawn your line. If you want it exactly centered on the line you can choose that option and if I go to a, a front face view and go back to that feature you'll be able to see So there's my line and the radius of the bend is split either side equally to that line. If I choose that one, it moves it to the one side and that one to the other side. So that one is where the bend actually starts. So I actually want it centered. I like 60 degrees, that's what I wanted at the beginning. So I'm going to click on OK and I'm going to go Control 7 and I've got my bent acrylic shape. Now if I want to produce a slot on here that's at an angle, then what I'm going to do is select my right plane which cuts through the middle of my object and I'm going to do a sketch on there. Sketch 7 appears and I'm going to go normal to that sketch and it turns it to face sideways on. I'm now going to select a line. I'm going to draw a line that I like the angle of. So I pop that in there. and I'm going to do another line set back from there parallel to it so I'm going to do offset entities. Now you've noticed it's previewing me a curved ended shape and that's because the cap ends box is selected. I can either go for a straight end or a capped end with arcs and I can reverse it to go the other side as well and I actually want it to go the other side and I'm going to leave it with the curved end because I think the iPad would fit in there nicer. So I'm going to click on OK and you'll notice now that that sketch is in the middle of my shape. So what I need to do now is do my features extruded cut and in doing my extruded cut if I go to my mid plane it will go both directions and I can then just drag it until it removes material all the way through and it produces my angled slot. I'm just going to go to a end view by pressing a spacebar and selecting the face I want to view from press Control 7 again to take it back to isometric and I'm just moving it around with the mouse wheel and pressing it down and holding it. So I've got my shape and what's very useful about this is if I then wanted to take this and cut it on a laser cutter I can actually fold this back to flat using my sheet metal command and then export it as a DXF file into another program like uh, 2D Design for instance. So I'll show you how to do that because that might be something you want to do with your projects. I go to sheet metal and I go to flatten and it immediately lays it out flat and if I go spacebar zoom from above you can see there that because it's cut through an angled surface when I did my extruded cut I can see parts of the curve here because of that sloping face and the same at the back so there would be some editing needing to be done if I was going to laser cut this shape um, but it does allow you to export it as a DXF file and then perhaps trim off some of these little lines where you've got double lines showing where you've got slopes. I'm going to go back to control 7 and click off the flatten and there's my shape. And to turn it into an acrylic rendered shape I go to my appearances tab. I'm going to just pin that open. I'm going to go to clear plastic. I'm going to go to acrylic and just drag and drop some acrylic onto it, onto the whole part. And I'm going to change the background because with the current background on white it doesn't show very well with acrylic. So I'm just going to choose the three point green. And I'm going to go to render tools. And again if your render tools aren't switched on, if you just right click and go to render tools and then your tab will appear. So mine's switched on, I select render tools and integrated preview. And that should then render give you a clear acrylic shape. So if you like the video please click like and subscribe for future videos that might help you with your DT projects.